our current projects in expansion, the future expansion. As you may remember last year, uh, what we talked about then, uh, a lot of my area just continues on on that, but sort of as an update on the uh, interconnections, Spring Creek, uh, the first phase of that, that also added a little bit of interlooping on the Spring Creek system due to our trihalomethane issues up there. We have that first phase is under construction now, pipes being laid. The second phase should go out for bid in the next month or so to complete that interlude there from North Lowndes over to the Spring Creek uh, system. And <clears throat> uh, we would hope that that will be completed hopefully by the end of the calendar year, but certainly in early uh, 2019. Then our next phase there would be to uh, put the South Lowndes and the North Lowndes interconnection out for bid. So that will, uh, right at the end of James Road, basically it will go through and follow our current sewer easement and it will go down to exit 13 and tie in right in addition to that one is the <clears throat> running the 12 inch extension from Whitewater over to the Lock Laurel booster station you may recall that we put that in and uh, the only feed along that area uh, of exit 11 and all there is an 8 inch that goes across so to keep up and, and meet our needs there, we need to run that 12 inch and get it up to that booster station to feed on out to the middle school and up the perimeter when that time comes. That will take us through uh, 2020. I think at, uh, at that point in time, uh, by Austin High School will be been in, in you know, a couple of years. I think at that time we will need to evaluate uh, how we move next on the east side, whether we come down from the Spring Creek area and start that direction, or if it's most feasible to continue moving from the south back up to the north. But I think we'll be able to evaluate our growth and look at that to make some determinations there. One of the other areas that I had listed on our points and for utility points and information was the upgrade of the county standards and space. I know that y'all a lot of time have concern about the new private water systems that go in and how we can address that. In looking, uh, as you recall, dear, throughout this year, at one time we was looking at water authorities and you asked me to gather some information on that. And one of the things we found is that uh, many of our other municipalities, water authorities, cities, counties, and all, uh, in looking at that, we found out that their distance to require connection, uh, in some cases, and one that I thought was an extreme case, they require connection literally five miles out. I think that would be a little excessive for us, but we currently have a requirement of a thousand feet. I think if we are looking at uh, subdivisions that are, you know, that are of the size that require a public water system, maybe we look at, you know, is there a better distance to require that connection to help grow our systems and meet that need. These guys are spending, you know, if, if we, in our space, obviously we want to get our fire protection uh, to the flows that is needed for, to, for our insurance purposes and all. When we start looking at that, the money they're spending on the dual wells and the tanks and everything needed, we're not a long ways out from what it may be to run that uh, water out closer to a mile, that being 5,280 feet uh, versus the 1,000. That's something to look at. One of the things that I've put in, in your notes there, uh, the price for running HDPE pipe, and these, these prices are relative to what we've run in the past. And when you look at that amount, it sort of jumps out there at $65 a foot for 12-inch pipe. If you go about six tabs over, there's a water sewer tab. It's, it's got these are oil on there. And that's $65 a foot. The way I put that out there, that is everything uh, is, is the price that we've been looking at on that. That includes your engineering, uh, all of your supplies put in, uh, completely ready to go. But for 12 inch pipe, it's about $65 a linear foot, 8 inch, maybe 55, 6 inch, down to about 48. And I've also looked there and some quick uh, 
draw of information from some well drillers and talking with the state, you know, uh, EPD approved water system and now that don't include their pipe in the um, in the area, but the well, the actual well site to provide that, you are around two hundred thousand dollars according to what size and what requirements are needed for to meet the fire flow purposes. You know, you're you're working from there, maybe a little smaller in some, maybe a little more in others. Uh, and and this doesn't include the pipe to the to the individual no, sites, right? No, that's strictly the well site, basically, and uh, the treatment requirements and all. Uh, Mid-sized lift station uh, is, you can just about figure, $250,000. Uh, of course, 8-inch sewer main, it's a, it's a bit uh, cheaper than running the water main because you don't have the, all the valves and hydrants and everything like that, so you'll find that to be a little bit smaller. Uh, amount. Uh, I think one of the things that we also look at here, just a few other things in this, is requiring these new systems to have the adequate fire protection. I think that's important so that you know they meet those insurance requirements that's needed. Another thing that we've noticed, I've noticed since I've got here, um, sometimes with some of our subdivisions, we they try to market and if one don't. Sure enough, growing's not kept clean. Before you know it, the, the markers are gone from where those um, connections are, and the as-builts are maybe not as good as they could be. One of the things I think we look at is requiring the developers and or the people putting it in to have those points GPS in. With technology we have today, that I think would be relatively inexpensive for them, and then we would have you know, you would have better ass builds to go back to at all times. Uh, one thing that I did not put on your paper, if you just want to make a note there, but you know we've had a considerable amount of issue with the uh, Coleman Road, from Coleman Road down to the river on that 16-inch force main. We are looking at possibly replacing that uh, to take care of that. We feel like it's a pipe issue that uh, we just don't have any other fix for that to replace that. So that's something we'll be looking at. Another couple of items just to mention, again, a lot of our growth shows in the northern area and it tends to, at this point, it's still looking that way. Uh, I think some things that need to be looked at and entertained is possibly uh, property for a new well field in the North Lounge area. And then also the potential for uh, LAS in the North Lounge area. How many years do you think we're looking at? Based, I mean, I was just looking at some of the projects you have for 2018 yeah. I'm, I'm thinking that last year when we looked at, at the different sections of that water, we was around uh, $25 million with all of it we was looking at at that time. So we've got a couple of other things here that we've added to that. Um, certainly that... Coleman Road Force Main project. Uh, that would probably be a three and a half million dollar project just off the top of my head. I'm, don't hold me to that exact, but that'll be a considerable project, but it's, it's one we don't have a choice in. Looking at your water and sewer, as well as the future expansion, which is extremely important, Steve has a mission to maintain our current system at a uh, high level of maintenance and functionality. The last thing we want to do is focus strictly on expanding without keeping up with and maintaining the structure we have now, only to have to go back sometime in the future and start doing something we should be doing all along anyway. I mean, I guess how many feet or miles of water do we have now? Do you measure, do you know what that is? I do. I believe I was looking at that just a few weeks back. I think on the water lines, we're, they're, they're both not far off of 100 miles each, I'm, I believe is where we're at. I can, I'll get that information and be a little better on that. And do you have an average cost of maintaining a mile of waterline or a foot of waterline or have you figured that? 
I will look into that. I, I don't have anything right right here readily available on that, but we can look at that. One of the things that we have that I try to put in the budget annually is to do like on, on the sewer line part of it is the, the manhole rehab and some lift station rehab along and along. And then obviously on the water water lines is not as much. You know, once they're in there, you have some repairs, but as far as maintenance on the water lines, that comes more into your tanks and, and such as that where you're keeping them up to par and clean than any uh, repairs and painted that needs to be done. Well, that's something we need to make sure we look into and know, know what our maintenance cost is going to be. So when we're looking at adding right. more lines that we know we've got to make sure we add this to, this is what it's going to cost yeah. us to keep it. Correct. It's, it's like building a building. If you can get money to build a building through SPLOS, but then you don't have the money to maintain it, yep. then it, it's not going to be as much good as it should. Exactly. Let me, if I, can, if I could, add this, and this is just Bill's thoughts. Um, the looping of this system is extremely important from my point of view for the viability of the system itself, but as well as to be able to serve the citizens in a major part of the county, where the, primarily the, the larger concentration of population is. Uh, it's also extremely important that by the looping process we build in the redundancy as well because then we have a totally looped system rather than individual islands of systems. Um, so my best case scenario based on current budgeting, if you could use, uh, now use that, what kind of time frame would you be looking at to loop that system together? If, if you had the funding based on what you currently have to start today, you talked about 20 to 25 million dollars. Yep. I'm hoping with, with what we have that uh, SWAS projections and everything, I'm hoping that by 2022 at the latest that you'll be able to have it looped together. And I think that's extremely important. Now, and I agree with Mr. Pritchard's analogy. 120 percent. That is extremely important. Also, um, be careful that we don't neglect the current system that we have. Um, water and sewer infrastructure is one of those things, and I think a lot of people experience this. But it's out of sight, out of mind, and you don't have a problem with it until it comes to the top. That's when you got a problem. Yeah. Um, but if you can at least stay on top of those maintenance issues, understanding what the Life ex the life expectancy of the materials that's there for that infrastructure, you can do some planning and you can do some budgeting that will allow you to begin to stay even better on top of those things. And so I think that's all important. But our number one goal there should be is that we continue to uh, improve the system so that the system will be able to better provide for the growth in our community so that we can serve our citizens. And if it goes along with working some sort of process, as you mentioned, with the private well systems, then so be it. Um, but there needs to be requirements that needs to be looked at for these private well systems. It doesn't, and I'll give you an example, it doesn't do us any good at all for us in our requirements to require fire hydrants in a subdivision, but if they don't have well and water and pressure enough to generate the flow rate that's required for those hydrants, then why are we even doing that? You know, so the point is is that it needs to meet the fire safety so that we can keep our ISO numbers down. Um, so again, it, it, there's a lot moving in that, but I think that we're going to serve the citizens in Lambs County with good water and good sewer services, then we need to start looking at this and looking at it very, very seriously. Where we're about to go in the next phase of this is to where our uh, actual growth is taking place from a, a residential uh, standpoint. And this will be uh, Carmela and Jason. Uh, but we look at where our roads are, where our water and sewer appears to be going. Now we want to look at what development is doing and what that tells us about the future and how we can better utilize uh, these tools that we have. 
real quick. Yes. Steve. Yes, sir. While we're talking about looping and tying all this together, is is the processing plant for sewage going to be adequate? Are we? Is there any thought about putting an additional one up north where the majority of this stuff's coming? You mentioned from? that. That was what I mentioned. We that is something that we need to evaluate and look at and look at the potential of property. Obviously, that takes. I, I heard it that yep. we were looking at water. Yep. Okay. Well, we both water and our well fill and sewer and LAS. One of the things about the geographic, the uh, water is better from the sense of uh, the purity of it as you get closer to the Hay Hira area. The soil is better. <laughs> the soil is better suited in the southern end of the county for the percolation with the, the spray field. Correct. So and trying to figure out how we locate those and still provide what's needed for the development of both of those areas, you have to keep in mind what your resources are for both of those areas and what is financially reasonable uh, to accomplish. Is that? Yes. Okay. 